Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, respected members in the dais, previous speakers, it's been a very enlightening morning. Um, came here thinking that it would be something to do with, uh, mostly to do with cost accounting, cost management, turned out to be uh, quite a rewarding experience. I'm going to be talking a little bit about emerging technologies, about global operations at Techno India. Um, firstly, to begin with, uh, Dr. Shonji Ghosh, he spoke a lot about, uh, about emerging technologies, kind of made my presentation a little redundant. But uh, thank you very much. It was very enlightening uh, this morning. Uh, firstly, it's a real pleasure to be here to participate in the Global Summit um, at, at this plenary session titled Academic Reforms. Uh, I'd be representing Techno India Group, Techno India University today. Uh, before I begin my speech, I'd also like to say that um, I went to school at Birla High School in Kolkata, and uh, I see Dr. Shuman Mukherjee uh, in front. He used to he used to chair the Ellen Birla National Debate. I used to host the debate, and it's uh, this is my first week back in Calcutta. I just came back from France last week, and it's like life coming back a full circle. Welcome, sir. I'm looking forward to see your speech in the second part of the session. Uh, speaking a little, little bit about Techno India Group, uh, this group was started in 1985 by my father, the chairman of Techno India Group, Mr. Gautam Rajodhri, Chancellor of Techno India University. And since then, it's become a landmark in the world of education. Uh, it's changed lo lots of lives. Uh, we have about 70,000 captive students, uh, a lot of uh, almost five lakh um, alumni members. Uh, but not getting into too much specifics. Uh, we recently started a partnership with IC, uh, ICMAI, uh, wherein we, uh, we're trying to establish an academic, professional, vocational, curricular, extracurricular uh, cooperation with, uh, with the Institute of Cost and Management Accountants, uh, development of, uh, and conduction of courses and programs, faculty exchange, uh, and a, a possibility for graduates of ICMAI to pursue a PhDs at Techno India University as well as possibility for Techno India students to pursue cost accountancy courses. Um, also lots of infrastructure sharing, uh, faculty sharing, and hopefully this will be a very, very interesting time for us to, uh, to establish uh, new relationships. Um, we're living in very interesting times. Uh, technology is moving faster than we ever have. I've uh, spent quite a little bit of time in the valley, uh, in Silicon Valley, uh, working with my professors, my mentors from Stanford. Uh, we've worked on a lot of developing technologies. I've, I've worked with, uh, with people from uh, PSA, which is the largest automobile group in France, uh, coming up with a marketing strategy for their, uh, for their driverless cars. Uh, when I look at that, it's interesting to see that you come back to India and uh, to see the way that we are still teaching our students, the way that we are imparting education. Uh, we're not even remotely close to where we should be in terms of global standards. At Techno India Group, at Techno India University, this is something that, uh, that we've started to develop from this year itself. Uh, we're doing a complete rebranding of, uh, of the university, and along with that, what we want to do is we want to start um, um, a course in, uh, in developing and uh, emerging technologies. Uh, very recently, at the um, uh, so there's something called the CES, which is the largest consumer electronics uh, show in uh, in Las Vegas. The MD of Daimler Benz, uh, the the mother company of uh, Mercedes Benz, he said that the uh, the major competitors for car companies are not other car companies anymore. It's companies like Tesla, like Google, like Amazon, and much like we've always heard from when we were young that change is the only constant. This term has never been more true than now, than today. Uh, artific artificial intelligence, the advent of which has completely revolutionized the way that, that we think, that we work, that we, are, uh, that we perform business. Very recently, I don't know if you're aware, but very recently, uh, Google at, uh, came up with its own language wherein it can, it can, tra it can translate, it can uh, communicate with other languages by itself without the intervention of human beings. Think about it, a language came up with another language without the intervention of human beings. That's the kind of society that we're living in right now. Uh, at IBM, you have IBM Watson. Uh, they started, they started uh, something called IBM Watson, which, which, uh, which is gonna make the lives of, of lawyers a lot easier. 
uh, in a way that it does a lot of fact checking. It, uh, uh, in a lawyer's life, about 70% of his time goes into checking really long documents, fact checking them, coming up with errors. But the uh, software IBM Watson does it for them, which completely revolutionizes the way that the legal sector is going to function tomorrow. Uh, we are, in terms of healthcare, there's something called the Tricorder X, which is a, a device, a medical device, which is available for, for a very nominal price. It's going to come onto the markets beginning of 2018. And it, uh, if you blow into it, and if it, what it does, it, it has 54 biomarkers. Uh, what it does is it detects uh, almost any anomaly in your body uh, and gives you very relevant solutions to all these medical problems. So this is basically me trying to give you more concrete examples of how fast uh, the, the revolution in terms of technology is taking place. Uh, self-driving cars, they're already a reality. So there are two levels of self-driving cars, to make it a little more concrete. There's level three, which is uh, already available in the markets. You can basically be in the car as long as you're not sleeping. But by 2025, what we've, what we've seen is there'll be level five autonomous cars where you can just literally sit in your car and it will drive you around. The way that we look at cars now is not going to exist anymore in the future. People will not own cars anymore in the future. If you think about that, it's going to completely change the way that cities function, because there will be no requirement for parking spaces, for example. There will not be any requirement for drivers, for example. There will not be any need for our children to, have, to own driving licenses, because your car will drive you to work. It will drive you back home from work. Companies like Tesla, companies like Google, even engineers sitting in their garages, 19-year-old kids, college dropouts sitting in garages in the Silicon Valley are disrupting enormous billion-dollar businesses using their MacBook computers. It's incredible this time that we live in. Visual arts, think about 3D printing. Very recently, uh, they, they built a 60-floor tower in Dubai using 3D printed construction materials. If you think about it, that's going to reduce the amount of labor required for people to go up and, uh, and create a building by so much so that there would be no requirement for manual labor as we know it. Think about it. Uber, the biggest taxi company in the world, doesn't own a single taxi. Think about Airbnb. You have, it's the biggest hotel company in the world, doesn't own a single property. The way that business is done all over the world is changing so fast that if a ca academia cannot keep up with it, we're going to be so far behind the status quo in the world that it'll be, it'll be, um, it'll be disastrous for, for society in general. Disruption is the status quo now. Uh, software, as we know it, will disrupt most traditional industries within the next five years, not even 10 years. The uh, business opportunities available in the world will change. And looking into the future, about 70% of the jobs that we have right now, they will disappear. It says you're 20 years. That's backdated information, I think, uh, within the next 10 years or so. Uh, as Dr. Shonjib Ghoshar also pointed out, that, uh, that in a country like, uh, that in uh, continents like Asia and in Africa, you would, have to, uh, the, you would have to create new kinds of jobs. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but in Finland, they tried out something called the universal basic income which is basically if you, if you are a part of the working force, even if you do not work, if you do not go to office, you will still get a monthly salary from the government to be part of society, just for, just for being part of that country. Uh, it was a very interesting social experiment, the results of which were also were even more interesting because uh, they had predicted that it's going to, people do not want to work, that people in Finland apparently have enough money to sustain themselves, the government's paying for them now. But what happened was within two months of universal basic income being, uh, being uh, rolled out to a certain class of the population, what happened was the, uh, the propensity, of the, the interest in, in working and their, uh, and their motivation to go to work increased by almost 30%. That was, the, that was the data. So people actually want to work. But it'll be disastrous if we are not able to give them jobs which, which fit their profiles anymore. At TIU, we are trying to, as I said before, we're trying to establish a new curriculum uh, which focuses on these emerging technologies, making a new brand of world leaders for tomorrow. Um, we're saying some things about agriculture, wherein agricultural robots will be available for as cheap as $100, which can basically plow your fields, do your pre-harvest, harvest, post-harvest. Harvest. Uh, things are going to change 
a lot for for farmers in developing countries as well. They're going to improve their. It's going to staggeringly improve their lives. Uh, we're also working on a concept for environmentally friendly electric cars, uh, which we have, which we want to roll out in a, in the next few years from Techno India. It will run on electricity. Electricity will also become much cheaper and cleaner because. Um, sea water will be, uh, uh, can be harvested after that to make uh, electricity after that. Biohubs, not getting into that. Cryptocurrencies, very interestingly. Uh, so there's been news that China and Russia are experimenting with their own national cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are based on, um, on third, entry, uh, legit, third entry accounting uh, the, and and cryptography, obviously, and on the basis of blockchain technology. And it's going to completely disrupt industries the way that we see it. According to recent data, 19 industries, including banks, insurance agencies, will be, uh, will be completely disrupted by uh, cryptocurrencies, by bitcoins, Ethereum, Litecoin, Ripple, all the cryptocurrencies available on the market right now. Uh, and especially with national agencies, countries uh, experimenting with na national cryptocurrencies, things are going to change faster than ever. We live longer than before now. 79 uh, years used to be the, the average lifespan about four years ago. By 2036, uh, we're going to live 100 years. So we need to find out ways in, in which we can keep people active. We can uh, keep people emotionally uh, available, emotionally um, co contributing to society, intellectually contributing to society as well. And for this, from 2018, we want to start a uh, continuous curriculum development program where most of the intellectual work that is to be done uh, by, the, by the workforce, by the national workforce, uh, needs to be developed, needs to be rethought of because it's not, on, it's not enough to just provide technological support in the university. It's also important to master relationships. It's also important to master intellectual abilities and uh, especially in terms of uh, engineering students in India, it's something that we've seen has been lacking for, for a very long time. So right now, we, we, you get a lot of hard skills, relatively easy to learn. Uh, they're taught in all, almost all engineering universities, and we're bringing in technological advancement. But what would really set, uh, set these students apart in the future is what machines and technologies cannot do. And that is one-on-one -on -one human relationships what uh, intellectual jobs, because these cannot be replaced by robots, these cannot be replaced by artificial intelligence. And uh, for this, for this we, are, uh, we are planning uh, all year long courses on workshops, mentoring, uh, for negotiation skills, public speaking skills, uh, emotional intelligence, and uh, specific events like business games, public speaking contests, lectures, etc. Uh, that will be all from my side. Hopefully, I was able to uh, add some more to what Dr. Ghosh had said before. And I hope you all a lovely uh, rest of the afternoon. Looking forward to the Economic Forum after this speech. Thank you very much. Have a great day.